You have to be careful if you uh, over-network, then you find yourself getting roped into presenting even if you didn't want to. So there is that scheme of it that you have to balance that. Um, so the topic that I wanted to talk about a little bit is one of these questions I get asked all the time. Um, I'm in a K-12 environment, um, but as security professionals, you know, pretty much everything's on the internet these days. And so we get asked a lot of questions about, hey, is this website safe or can I use it or not? Um, so we ended up in kind of me figuring out how I wanted to answer that question more effectively. I decided I needed to have like a process or a set of tools I was going to use instead of just viewing websites and see if, seeing if my Sustar went off, right? Um, so obviously a key piece of this is what is, you know, is a website safe is going to depend on your organizational arrangement, right, and what that looks like. Um, for myself in the K-12 industry, right, we have quite a few things um, that we have to pay attention to just like you do in the payments industry or government industry or defense contractors. All those things are going to have their own standard. Um, but in the case of in my world, right, these are the types of things that I'm paying attention to. One of the ones that can be kind of the most um, kind of the most challenging is the advertising practices, right? Because I have to protect students and I can't set them up to be advertised to. So that kills a lot of website opportunities and different tools out there. Um, mainly because I'm a meme guy or I'm dating myself, right? But pretty much any and all of these questions can be answered with various tools. Um, so. My approach here is more about kind of intermediate to beginner tools, um, just to kind of how to be able to initially sample or kind of check on those things. There are other presenters that are way smarter than I am that are doing things on like Burp Suite and a lot of other things that are way more red team aspect. These are more kind of easy blue team checkoffs. Um, so I kind of break the tools into a couple areas. Um, the first one is kind of what I call a uh, common sense review. Um, and honestly, when I look at the requests that end up in front of me to approve or not approve, if people would just do the common sense check, it would have skipped the entire conversation. Um, so something that I've been able to use this type of concept for is, is when we do annual trainings or I get to send out the security or whatever based email, it's like, hey, ask yourself these five questions about a website, right? You know. Do I see advertisements on the website? Do I have to log in? Um, you know, one of the things that people have a tendency to forget is like, hey, on the bottom of just about every single website that you want to do any business with, there's gonna be a terms and conditions or a privacy policy or a contact us or a legal or something. And you can usually discern and find out very quickly what that website does or doesn't do. Um, it's kind of an inter interesting practice to use it on yourself to go see, hey, these are websites I'd like to use. What are they doing with my information? Um, but this common sense review is honestly probably the most important step, especially when I'm trying to get users to help me answer this question. Um, now, I support 8,000 staff, so getting them all to help me answer that question reduces the volume that I have to deal with it. <laughs> um, but there's a couple of tools out there um, that I found can be particularly helpful for me. Um, the first one is called pentesttools.com. Um, they do have like a paid version that does a lot more detailed drill down, um, but they also have a free version. Um, you'll see, I have a personal vendetta against coolmathgames.com because everybody claims it's educational and it's 2,000 Java games that you don't have to use any math on. So all of my examples about security testing are just a small hidden, not so hidden agenda against cool math games. Um, <laughs> but the free version of, one of the pen test tools, you'll see this is an example where I dropped in, I dropped in their website and it gives us some overall um, quick feedback. The thing I like about this is instead of just saying like, hey, there's an insecure cooking set, cookie setting, this actually tells me why I should be concerned or what's really going on with it and then even gives me links to the proper CVEs. I found this to be a very helpful tool um, in helping my brain step through like, hey, I know that's bad, but I can't remember exactly why, right? Or thinking through that process. Um, you can use the free tool all day long, and if you do all the sub pages, it'll do that. The biggest advantage of the paid version of it is it'll do an entire web page index, and so that's a little more effective. 
Um, the other thing that a lot of folks um, end up forgetting to check, right, out there on the internet, to be listed on the internet, for the most part, there's like an unlisted group, but you have to pretty much tell the DNS and internet providers of the world, like, this is the category of what my website is, right? Um, so whether it's banking or educational or games or whatever those things are, right? With my perfect I hate you this website example, right? Like, the coolmathgames.com is not even pretending that it's not games, right? They're just saying right out there, hey, this is a gaming website, right? And so sometimes that helps you kind of get appearance through that to really understand what it is. Um, on top of that, lots of content filters and firewalls and all kinds of things look at these categorizations. So oftentimes if you have a website you do need to approve, but it's getting blocked or whatever that may be, Sometimes that categorization key can be really helpful for you to properly configure content filtering or other things to allow it. Um, Google also has a really nifty tool that's been um, around for a really long time. Um, it's one of those Google beta projects that never got super pretty on the front, but is just around there. Um, what's kind of cool is that, you know, they call it a safe browsing check. The number of things and what this checks um, has been fairly um, has been fairly extensive, um, but it also changes from time to time. Um, the trickiest piece about this is you just have to be able to read enough basic HTML code to insert within those quotation marks um, your the website to do it. Um, it's also kind of fun with a lot of these tools to run it on your own website um, or your own company's website. It's kind of a good way to kind of test and think through some of those processes. Um, I do have some very specific things on here, and so after someone wants an email, they're shared or whatever, I'm happy to provide that, because right now these URLs down fast enough is kind of tricky. <laughs> um, another website that I actually learned this one from the SaintCon community several years ago, um, but virustotal.com is also a really cool free tool. Um, a lot of the things that in the security community, we have a tendency to use it for is like hash checking and in individual files to check for virus or malware, et cetera. Um, something that for many years I didn't realize they had until I got clicking around and using it is they will also check URLs. Um, and the cool part about these URLs too is you'll see it has a community-based score. So when you check those or if you're finding different things, you can flag your own report and that kind of goes into the database to help the greater community um, be part of that evaluation. Um, the other, another thing you can look at too is called urlvoid.com. Um, the nice part about this is it gives you a little bit more information about, um, about what's going on with that URL, right? Like these cool math games people have apparently had their website for 20 years, so my vendetta is not working, right? <laughs> um, but it'll give you IP addresses. It even kind of gives you details about server locations. Um, so this can be really useful The you know, hey, is this website in Russia? Or where is this website, right? And these are just things I can very quickly go through in my process to, you know, yes, it's okay, or no, it's not okay, right? Not all these tools will always give you a result on every single thing, but, um, you know, the other thing is, um, as Poe built us the new phrase this morning, when we duck things, Right, um, DuckDuckGo actually has a nifty little um, privacy checker extension you can add to your browser, and it um, throughout your browsing um, activity will give you like a grade and a rating based on some security checks that that website does. Um, downside is is when you install it, it does access, it it inserts itself as a proxy in some method, and basically you agree to let it watch everything you're doing which is kind of the reverse of the theoretical DuckDuckGo thing. But so I do like to use it on occasion. So I use it on a VM box. I turn it on. I check it. I turn it off, right? Um, because the whole idea of am I private or not being checked, but I have to give you everything to know to be checked, just kind of call me tinfoil hat, but that's just, it goes backwards in my head. Um, you know, one of the other things that is kind of this great mystical layer of the internet is, is SSL certificates and how they work and if they're fresh and what they're doing and when, um, when they're expiring, if they're working, etc. Um, 
SSL Labs runs um, this free, um, it's, it's owned by Qualsys, but they run this free site checker, site checker that you can drop it in on. They have lots of really cool, really expensive paid tools, um, but the piece that's really useful for me when I just use the free stuff and we're public education, so I very rarely spend money on this premium stuff, but it gives us a quick check on do they have certificates, are they working, and just gives me a quick grade. Because um, I'm also that guy where like, I get the security, the certificate concept, and like, I think it's cool, but I get very confused down in the weeds if I think too far, so straight letter grades work really well for me. Um, so those are kind of some more of the basic tools, right? Um, things that are pretty easy to use. There's some more intermediate tools um, that, you know, kind of like your duct tape or, you know, the handyman's secret weapon, right, as our hero Red Green calls it. Um, now, this is kind of interesting um, because I've now just realized I forgot to include the URL here. <laughs> um, so, checking the security certificate health can tell you a whole bunch of interesting things about what's going on on the website. Um, now, obviously, as you can see, this is a little more of a technical output, so that's why I classify it in the intermediate group. Um, but there's a couple things I could learn about this website just from running this checker. Um, the f if we look at the first one, right, I can see that they're actually, they're using the security cer certificate and it lists that they're in Greater Manchester. Okay, so I actually now know that they're in Great Britain, right? And this tells me some more information about them, which is interesting because their hosted IPs um, are all US based, they're publicly listed ones. Um, so this gave me an additional piece of information that I didn't have about them. Um, one of the other things that's become very popular that, at least for me, I feel like it's a potential vulnerability, but there's a company out there now that's called Let's Encrypt, and they do security certificates for free, and so lots of people use them. However, they are only good for 90 days. And so if you were theoretically wanting to try to camp on a website or potentially pick up their certificate or do something like that, it's publicly listed right there when it expires and when it started, right? So if we look at the first one, right, we can see that on 919 they set it up, right, and then it expires on 1218, right? So interpret the usage of a website how you will or how you want to in terms of, like, if they're too cheap to buy a security certificate, should I be considering that or not? I don't know if that's cheap, it could just be cost savings, but even in public education where I don't have any budget, I don't have the emotional strength to change the security certificate on every device every three months. <laughs> it would not make my life easy enough. Um, you know, the other thing that kind of comes up um, is like, okay, like that was super high level, you're cool and everything, but like I wanted a lot more detail and want to get way more into looking at this stuff. Um, so probably the most um, popular tool out there is called Burp Suite. Um, that's not a spelling error, that's exactly how it goes. Um, there is a paid version of Burp Suite that does a whole bunch of cool stuff. Um, there's also a community edition of Burp Suite, um, which is free. Um, true story, when people were at, I went to the Discord SynCon community and said, hey, I'm trying to develop a process on how to better check websites and see if they're secure or not. You know, what should I be using? And everybody went, burp, burp, burp. And I'm like, okay, well, I looked at it. It's a little bit complicated, but um, sure. So put me down to present on Burp Suite. And so that's how I decided I was going to have to learn Burp Suite because I had four months and I was going to learn Burp Suite so I could present to you folks on it. And um, turns out that was way more complicated than I wanted to deal with. <laughs> So I actually kind of backed up a little bit and said, actually, I want to talk about tools that are a little softer. Um, a big piece of this, though, which kind of took me through the first month of trying to figure it out, the way Burp Suite works is, again, this is another proxy that sticks itself right in the middle of your activity. Now, you can run a dedicated browser in it so that it's not watching everything else. Um, but if you have a good corporate secured network, it should not like this tool, right? Um, if you've got good security practices in place, you're gonna be paying attention to if your users are running proxies and doing things like that. Um, my antivirus tool didn't really like burp, my content filter didn't like burp, my firewall didn't like burp, 
But by the time I got it all straightened out, then it was pretty cool. But then it was like, okay, now I have it working and how the heck do I actually use it? Um, so this particular guy on YouTube has a really good introductory series on like, hey, this is how to use Burp. If you go to YouTube, there is thousands of folks showing you how to use Burp. Um, even Burp's community puts out one that is uh, super dry like our, like our drought season this year. Um, so this guy actually had some level of personality. Um, so I found it to be most useful. Um, in the community edition, it really is very user driven. So you have to go and, hey, I want to check this thing and then I want to check this thing and then this thing. So you kind of have to know what you want to use it for, or what you want to do. Um, in terms of the professional tool, if you pay for it, then you can kind of build automated tasks and it will go and do that. Um, but as a general rule, that's kind of, um, that's kind of some of the overall tools that I use. Um, and then some warnings about some cooler tools, but that's kind of what I've got for you. Um, questions, comments, emotional outbursts? Yeah. Um, it wasn't. Let me actually just. Oh, you know what? I'm using a borrowed laptop. Let me. Uh, it's in the SaintCon Discord in the security briefings from last week, actually. Um, let me. See. Yeah. Um, if you hit me after, I can get it to you. I because uh, that was actually super nifty too. I didn't actually know about until last week, and then I was looking at it, and I'm like, oh, whoa, this is really cool, right? But that's one of the advantages of, like, the SaintCon community and things like that. It came up in the Discord, and I was like, wow, this is, this is great. All right, well, thanks, everybody. I appreciate it, and uh, have a good con.